And I can't remember the exact reason why he had done so. Something like his mom lived with him and she was worried about people coming or something like that. So they installed this video on the front that she looked out on the front porch in the front yard and they caught something on there that was that was actually quite quite comical. Uh, lady driving the truck for the U.S. Postal Service pulled up by the street. She had a package to deliver for the guy, and you could see the the van pulling up along the street. And then all of a sudden, she just turns and she drives right through his yard, right between the porch and the flower bed. And then she gets out and she takes this package out of there and she walks up from about here to there to the porch and she just kind of throws it. And then she walks back two steps and she gets back in the van and she backs out through his yard again and takes off down the street. And uh, it, it was just kind of funny that, you know, he caught something on there. Of course, what does he do when he sees the video? He puts it online so everybody can see the video. You know, and then he, he said, you know, I wasn't really trying to get the lady in trouble or anything like this, even though I think that probably happened. And, you know, video cameras are kind of everywhere these days, and they catch everything, and everything they catch goes up on the Internet. And that's caused a lot of problems for some people. But let me ask you guys, how many of you would like to have uh, somebody come in and hide a bunch of video cameras all around your house? be able to tape everything that goes on in your house and then put it up there on the internet for everybody to see? Wouldn't that be fun? No? Don't think so? Don't think so? <laughs> A few weeks ago, uh, we looked at the qualities of uh, elders, qualities of the men for elders. And if you remember, several of those qualities had to do with their relationships within their own households, their relationships with their spouses and their relationship with their kids. Because how a man builds those relationships in his home reflects how he is as a man. And a look into a man's home can say a lot about that person, but I don't think many of us would really like having people come in and look into our houses. Uh, most of us have some problems in our homes on occasion. Some have more than others, but the book of Proverbs gives us some instructions on keeping things good at the home. And so this evening I would like to look at a few of those Proverbs. And I want to begin with, with a couple of Proverbs that deal with that uh, holy doorknob syndrome. Now, if, if you you, you know what I'm talking about, even though you may not be familiar with the term. The holy doorknob syndrome is very similar to the, the holy handle syndrome. And the, the holy handle syndrome is when you, at home, you get up in the morning on Sunday morning, and you and your wife and the kids and stuff, everybody's fighting, and you're arguing, and you're yelling, and you're screaming, and you're throwing stuff, because everybody's in a hurry, and... And then you get in the car and everybody's yelling and screaming at each other all the way to church. And when you get to the church building, you send the kids on in so that you and your spouse can sit there and argue and finish the argument for a little bit. But then you open the door and you walk up to the building and when you touch that holy handle of the door building, or the church building, you walk in the door just perfectly in love with each other. The little greatest Christians anybody's ever seen. You know what I'm talking about? That holy handle. Well, the holy doorknob syndrome is very similar. It's just that's what you do at home. When people come to your house and they touch that holy doorknob, all of a sudden you become these perfect Christians inside. Even though it's not really always that way. I want you to turn with me uh, to Proverbs chapter 17 uh, because Proverbs 17 1 deals with this holy doorknob syndrome. It says in, in Proverbs 17, 1, better a dry crust with peace and quiet than a house full of feasting with strife. Now, now the feasting here, the, the, the language that's used indicates this is probably a religious feast. This is people who are pretending to be religious. They're pretending, they're putting on this religious air, having this big feast and, you know, make it look like everything is just really good in our home. But there's strife there. 
There's arguments underneath there. If you go over into chapter 15, uh, verse 17, there's another one that's very similar. Chapter 15, verse 17. Better a meal of vegetables where there is love than a fattened calf with hatred. And the fattened calf was something. Uh, the fattened calf was something that would be done at times of great celebration, and when you're hosting people into your homes, and you prepare the fattened calf to to have this big banquet, have this big party, to to show everyone how well you're doing. So you offer this big banquet, but everything that's there is just quarrels and arguments and hatred. But we put on a show for everyone. It's kind of also similar to the keeping up with the Joneses syndrome, or maybe even the surpassing the Joneses syndrome. But love and peace and quiet, those are the things to seek in a home far above putting on airs and pretending. It's about being honest and, and really having something that's good and righteous in your home. But, but quarreling, is one of the main problems that we see in the homes in Proverbs. Now, I want you to look at a couple of these with me. Proverbs chapter 21, uh, verse 9 and verse 19. They're very similar Proverbs. It says, Better to live on a corner of the roof than share a house with a quarrelsome wife. And verse 19 says, Better to live in a desert than with a quarrelsome and ill-tempered wife. Now, by the way, it doesn't just pick on wives in Proverbs because there are a lot of Proverbs that deal with uh, ill-tempered and quarrelsome men as well. But that's just the way this, this is, is put there. And what this is implying is, you know, we tend to think of our homes as a place of safety and security, a place to get in from, from the elements. But, but both of these Proverbs say you'd be better off sitting on the roof, on the corner of the roof of your house, or in a desert, either place you're exposed to all of the elements, all of the wind and the rain and the dust and the dirt and everything else that goes on. And, and that's better than being in a, in a house with a quarrelsome spouse. And, and, and these Proverbs just go to show how much division and dysfunction can be caused by this ongoing quarreling and ongoing bitterness. These... Uh, like I said, these Proverbs aren't to point out that women are quarrelsome. I mean, we would never say anything like that. But instead, it, it's to let us know how dangerous this kind of stuff can be. Over in Proverbs chapter 27. Proverbs chapter 27, verse 15 and 16. Point out, in a lot of ways, the seriousness of this ongoing quarrel quarrelsomeness. Chapter 27, verse 15 says, a quarrelsome wife is like a constant dripping on a rainy day. Restraining her is like restraining the wind or grasping oil with a hand. Now, <clears throat> Tom Peterson in his trans, uh, or paraphrase of the, of the Bible, uh, it's called The Message, if any of you ever heard it, he really kind of misses the point in verse 15, he said, a quarrelsome wife is like the constant drip, 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 drip of a faucet. And, and that's not really the point at all, because a, a dripping faucet is really just annoying, right? But if you're in your house, and it's raining outside, and you hear a drip in your house, is that just annoying? No, that can be serious. And, and that's what this is talking about. The constant dripping on a rainy day. There's a problem with your house. And it's not a problem that you can just kind of kind of brush over and put a band-aid on. The trying to just brush over and put a band-aid on it is kind of like restraining the wind or grasping oil in your hand. It's not going to work. And what happens is if over a period of time you don't deal with the constant quarreling and bickering that takes place in a house, it can begin to erode the very foundation of the relationship and the foundation of that house. And so dealing with the
the quarreling, quarreling and strife and bitterness and anger and hatred that goes on in, in within a home becomes something that's very, very important. We need to be seeking to have a kind of peace within our homes. And so how do we alleviate the strife and quarrelsome uh, attitudes that go on in, in homes? And what can we do to bring peace into the homes? And Proverbs helps us with that as well. Look over in chapter 19, <clears throat> verse 13 and 14. <clears throat> it says, A foolish son is his father's ruin, and a quarrelsome wife is like a constant dripping. But then in verse 14, which kind of counters that, it says, Houses and wealth are inherited from parents. The things that a good parent gives to his children are houses and wealth. But a prudent wife is from the Lord. And one of the first things that can be done to prevent that kind of bitterness and ongoing problems within the home is to first choose wisely your spouse. And, and seek a spouse that is from the Lord. And that's one of the first things that you can do. I, I, in my premarital counseling, I, I always ask couples, you know, at some point, I said, have you had a really good fight yet? And if they say no, I say, well, then cancel the wedding and come back when you have. <laughs> Not really. They, they won't do that anyway. But, but I, I, some of them have said, you know, well, we don't really, we've never had a big fight, but we, we do argue a lot. I'm thinking, well, why would you want to spend the rest of your life doing that? <laughs> you know? But the ones that say, yeah, we've had a big fight, you know, then we talk about, well, how did you deal with it? How did you handle it? Because uh, there's nothing wrong with having a big fight. In fact, Dory and I went to a marriage conference several years ago, and they had us all turn to the person next to us and say, yeah, we fight too. Every couple in there. And, and it was just kind of funny because we all had to admit that, that we have done that on occasion. And there's nothing wrong with having an argument or a discussion. It's just about how you deal with it. But if you don't deal with it in a healthy way, it just becomes this ongoing picking at each other and prodding at each other. Eventually, the whole house is going to fall apart. Look over in Proverbs chapter 17, verse 13 and 14. <clears throat> Some other wisdom as to how to... Uh, keep things at peace within your house. If, if a man pays back evil for good, evil will never leave his house. Have you ever known someone that no matter what you did, they found something wrong with it? No matter how good you've done something, no matter how much you tried to help somebody, they just always got some little problem with it. You know, if a man pays back evil for good, Evil will never leave his house. In, the, in other words, learn how to appreciate the things that are done for you and show that. And then in verse 14, starting a quarrel is like breaching a dam. So drop the matter before a dispute breaks out. You know, sometimes it's okay to say, you know what, you know what, sweetie, you're right. And we're just not going not gonna to argue about this. Because, by the way, most of the time, they are right. You know, let's just be honest. But, but it's about learning to control, learning to appreciate, learning to get along. And, and most of the time, quarrels and conflicts come up in, in marriages and within homes because somebody always thinks they got to be right. In fact, over in chapter... Uh, 13, verse 10, the writer of the Proverbs lays out for us kind of where quarrels come from. Pride only breeds quarrels. But wisdom is found in those who take advice. See, if we always have to be right, we always have to have our way, there will always be quarrels. Very similar to what James says, if you want to flip over to the New Testament, some people, I've heard it said that James is the Proverbs of the New Testament, but in James chapter 4, beginning in verse 1, he says, 
pretty much the same thing. What causes fights and quarrels among you? Well, don't they come because from your desires that battle within you, you want something, but you don't get it. You kill and covet, but you cannot have what you want. You quarrel and fight. You do not have because you do not ask God. And when you ask, you do not receive because you ask with wrong motives that you may spend what you get on your own pleasure. You see, it, it really comes down to, to having pride, having some arrogance in there. And so by learning humility, learning how to give in sometimes, we can keep that peace within our house that will allow it to grow strong and have good, strong foundations. Now, we're going to close here in just a second, and I know I'm closing a little bit early, but I did do that on, I'm doing that on purpose because as I was working on this, I kept being reminded about a video clip that I saw. Uh, some time ago, somebody shared it on Facebook, and I saw it, and it's a, a woman telling a story about something that happened between her and her husband. She calls her husband left brain. She's right brain, and so she calls her husband left brain, and she tells this story, and, and I just want you to listen to the way that she kind of keeps things on the okay with her husband in the midst of, of a problem that goes on. But before I show that, since Paul uh, tells us that we're not to allow women to teach, we're going to close out the service, and then I'm going to show you that video and, and let you kind of learn a little bit of a lesson from that before we go back and have cake and celebrate birthdays. But I'm going to ask Daniel to come and lead us in a song. If you have any needs from the church tonight before we, we do dismiss, uh, this is a great time for you to come forward if you want to. We're going to stand and sing, and then after this song, we'll have our...